Okay, hello again. Let's get started as uh, part three. In this part, we are uh, going to talk about uh, sediment boundary conditions. Uh, in the uh, aircraft, uh, we are there are four uh, sediment boundary conditions type, including rating curve, uh, sediment load series, uh, and equilibrium load, and clear water or no sediment transport. Uh, HECRAS, uh, uh, like um, unsteady and quasi unsteady boundary conditions, requires sediment uh, data at each upstream model boundary and can uh, include uh, optional local uh, lateral sediment load where necessary. Uh, the editor automatically leads external uh, model boundaries and user can add local sediment loads at uh, I mean internal uh, cross section by pressing the add sediment boundary conditions. You, uh, you can click on this button and specify the location of new boundary conditions. Uh, the equilibrium load uh, is only available for opposite uh, boundaries. This method computes the boundary sediment loads from the bed gradation uh, and the sediment transport capacity class can be the equilibrium sediment transport capacity for each time step and uh, grain class at upper stream cross sections and introduce this capacity as a load time series into the next cross section uh, i mean that uh, in these uh, options the model starts to create new time series of uh, sediment uh, loads uh, the main important uh, issues we should consider uh, when using these options is about that uh, use equilibrium with uh, cautions uh, like uh, the normal dips, uh, downstream flow conditions, the equilibrium low sediment boundary condition is popular because it's so easy and it starts to create uh, new sediment loads. It avoids difficult and uh, data intensive pro preprocessing involved in developing uh, a sediment rating curve or sediment time series. However, these options is often insufficient. The equilibrium boundary condition is extremely sensitive to bed uh, gradation at upstream cross section and the selected trans uh, uh, selected uh, transport functions, which can easily uh, distort uh, distort it by orders of magnitude. Okay, uh, please be aware or be uh, careful. Uh, when you are using these options for creating sediment load into the model. Uh, the next uh, option is rating curves. It provides uh, sediment boundary uh, loads based on boundary flows. Select the sediment rating curve at any cross section with a boundary flow series, uh, upstream, lateral, or uh, lateral uniform. The sediment rating uh, uh, curve Boundary condition is always available for upstream uh, boundaries. When you select these options, let me show you. Uh, okay, uh, before explaining about the boundary conditions, uh, let me to show you how can we use uh, the defined uh, bit gradation samples in this model. Uh, we created we created my sample for example uh, i want to enter values for 10 20 40 80 90 95 and 100 percent this is the this data can be obtained in geotechnical studies, studies uh, or uh, studies related to the soil informations of your rivers. Okay, I defined the bed gradations uh, curve in these uh, sections in my sample parts and then click on OK. And in, uh, when you want to uh, define the suitable or appropriate uh, bed gradation sample to each cross section, you should only uh, need to select uh, uh, this uh, row and select your sample for your uh, desired or your uh, cross sections. I, I want to select my sample 
and if you uh, and if you click uh, on these options you can uh, you can drag and select different cross sections for this sample and this means that these cross sections contain these bed sample and other cross sections can be related to other samples for example these cross sections uh, have bed grad graduation of sample 4 and other uh, cross sections you can you can define different uh, samples and use it in required or in appropriate cross sections okay only you can use uh, if you uh, have sample uh, 3 in uh, upper cross section and sample 2 in downward cross section you can interpolate uh, the bit samples uh, using these sample 3 and sample 2 I select this area and click on interpolation gradation and you can see that the model interpolates the bit gradation for this cross section between sample 3 and sample 2 okay uh, let's go to the boundary condition tab uh, as I mentioned in this tab uh, for especially for upper stream uh, boundary conditions we can select rating curve sediment load series equilibrium load and clear water or no sediment uh, when you select a rating curve uh, which is a more popular method for boundary conditions in sediment transport modeling uh, you can uh, double click on this icon and you can see the rating curve editor will be appear uh, for rating curve you should select a full load point uh, if you have uh, hydrometric station and uh, have full and uh, sediment load series simultaneously you should select the uh, sample data sets for this issue for example if you have 40 samples which contain simultaneously full and load you, should, uh, you can select these values and enter the flow and load values for each point or each time or uh, each uh, time steps in this case uh, we only have five uh, flow load uh, samples uh, when the flow is about uh, 2 CFS the value of total load is equal 1.2 tons per day and if the uh, value of flow increase the value of uh, total load increases uh, and in this uh, part you should enter uh, the grain size of each uh, load for example in this uh, total load you should uh, extract the grain size distribution and for each point samples you should enter the suitable or available uh, bit materials okay okay to correlate uh, sediment uh, load with boundary discharge the rating curve includes pair flow data the number of columns uh, one for flow load pair and the other uh, one for flow and the other is for load uh, blank columns are not allowed it means that you should uh, enter the required values for these uh, rows uh, select a range of uh, flow that completely encompasses the flow expected during the simulation uh, if uh, flows occur that exceeds the upper bound uh, of the rating gap crest will not extrapolate uh, the load values but will use the largest sediment load uh, specified uh, in the table for example if you have uh, the full value of about uh, 600 cfs the model use the uh, 500 uh, tons per day for that flow and it uh, and unfortunately it does not will not extrapolate the total load based on new flow values uh, he crest uh, uh, will interpolate load below the smallest interflow uh, for example if you have the flow values for example 50 60 or 
50 CFS, the model uh, calculate the uh, load value by using interpolations. Uh, the unit of sediment loads can be set as a ton or milligram uh, per liter. For example, in this window, you can use load or concentration. You can see milligram per liter or tons per day. In most cases, study we use these options for defining uh, the relation between flow and load. Okay, the pairs of flow and sediment loads can be obtained in hydrometric station. Hey, Chris, uh, uses load interpolation to associate loads with flow between specified flow load series. And in this figure, you can see the idealized uh, flow load curve with inflection point. It, this is the best curve for defining flow and bed load variations. Uh, in this, uh, in the rating curve options, uh, you, sh uh, you can define a uh, diversion load uh, related to lateral structures uh, in this window. And you can select plot and you can see that the relation between flow and loads is presented at this curve. Okay, uh, this the next uh, segment boundary condition is clear water uh, conditions. In a uh, newly version of HECRAS, the clear water boundary condition is uh, considered, uh, and uh, this boundary conditions is just a simple way to define a no sediment boundary. Uh, if you want, uh, and in this case, the models uh, don't uh, define uh, sediment values to transportation. A clear water boundary condition can simulate the high track efficiency dam outlet or other full boundary uh, without appreciable sediments. Uh, and junctions uh, flow split. Let me show you again. And you can see it, uh, when you have the split or junctions in your uh, rivers, uh, the HECRAS uh, has some options for considering this. Uh, junctions or split, and these options include weighted sediment split, potential weight uh, said sedimentation split, and Q uh, WT said uh, split and sediment split by grain size. Uh, before explaining about these issues, I want to state that uh, we explain about rating care, equilibrium, clear water, and finally. Sediment low series. Sediment low series very light or very similar to uh, flow series because when you select these options, the model, uh, the, the sediment low series uh, editor will be appeared and you can enter the duration and sediment load for uh, this boundary condition. Uh, because in most cases, studied in most uh, uh, hardware developing or uh, undeveloping countries, uh, we don't have uh, enough sediment data. I mean that uh, we don't enough time series for sediment load. If you have uh, sediment load time series, it's the best choice for sediment transport modeling uh, using HECRAS. Uh, because in most cases that study, we don't have required data set, we don't use this uh, boundary condition. Uh, in this boundary condition, uh, you should enter the duration of that uh, sediment load and the value of sediments in tons. And like rating term, uh, you can select a flow load per data and enter the value of flow values. Okay, let me again open data. Okay, this is the rating curve. Uh, let me to explain about the uh, value of sediment transportation or the sediment transport process in split or in junction location. Uh, in HECRAS, uh, you can use uh, four different methods for uh, 
simulation of sediment at junctions. Uh, the first one, or flow weighted sediment split, uh, the flow uh, weighted sediment split option is the default method for distributing uh, sediment between downstream reaches. It distributes sediments with the same proportion as flow. You know, if the percent of flow is uh, 20%, 20 percent, uh, the sediment uh, contribution is about uh, 20 percent. And if the contribution of a uh, flow is about uh, 80 percent for this reach, the sediment, uh, this, the model considered these values for sediment contribution of this reach. In th this is completely linear or uh, constant contribution. Because sediment transport is non-linear, uh, a distributor with more flow will transport disproportionately more sediment. Therefore, uh, a flow weight split tends to overestimate sediment diverted to lower flow distributary, which can be caused the lower flow reach to deposit quickly. The potential weight sediment split uh, addresses these issues. I mean, these options. Potential weighted sediment split. The potential weight or this method computes the sediment, uh, sediment split, computing the sediment split based on computed transport potential instead of the flow. Uh, for example, as you can see in this figure, the 20% of flow and only 6% of the sediment potential, while for the other uh, rich or tributary, 80% uh, of flow contributes to 90% of sediment potential. And using this equation, I mean the rating curve, using the uh, rating curve uh, formula, you can uh, calculate the potential of or the contribution of sediment for each uh, uh, for each river or for each reaches. Okay. Uh, after defining this uh, setting and uh, the averaging of uh, the settings, uh, the next step is about to sediment uh, properties options, which is very important for uh, accurate uh, transport modeling using HECRAS. Uh, for accessing these options, uh, you should uh, go to the sediment data editor and click on options tabs. And, uh, and under this uh, uh, options, you can access different uh, sediment properties and sediment options. For example, the first one is default uh, user grain, default and user grain default classes. Now, you know, Hecrest uh, defaults uh, 20 grain uh, classes that follows the phi scale, which is related to Parker and, and Andrew. Uh, for uh, which the grain class boundaries are defined by this formula, uh, where phi includes the, in, the integers between uh, minus 8 and plus 11. In this figure, you can see the default grain class in Hecras, which is which, uh, changed between clay, very fine cell to large uh, boulders, medium boulders, small boulders, and large cobbles with different lower and upper bound and mean diameter and geometry mean. You can use uh, these standards or these values for uh, grain classes or you can enter your uh, classes for sedimentation. However, I recommend you to use this, uh, the HECRAS default uh, grain classes to better simulation of sediment transport. However, you can change these values. Okay, uh, from the option menu, you can select user defined classes and change this value. And you can change this value manually, or you can use these values for your sediment transport model. The next is, uh, option is set cohesive options. Okay, uh, you know that a uh, HECRAS model, a uh, HECRAS uh, 
transport function uh, almost is related to uh, sand or gravel bed rivers. And for rivers with a smaller grain size, uh, like clay or silty clay or uh, clay or loam, uh, loamy clay uh, particles, you should uh, adjust or enter some properties, uh, some options for considering or calculating uh, the sediment transport potential for smaller uh, grain sizes. Uh, the first uh, option is transport function for organ grain size. If you select this one, the model calculates the transport capacity for a smaller grain size based on the transport function. For example, in this case, we use uh, accurate white and HECRAS starts to use this model, this transport function for all grain sizes. Why HECRAS provide an environment to uh, calculate uh, transport cap uh, capacity for a smaller grain size? For example, you can use chrome partentize for clay and silt size fraction, or you, you can use HEX uh, 16 uh, for calculation of sediment transport for a smaller grain size. Okay, as I mentioned, HECRAS can compute fine particle transport with the standard transport capacity approach using the selected uh, function to extrapolate a transport potential for the silt and grain classes outside of the developed range of these equations, uh, or with the chrome pattern size equations. Uh, there are uh, different important issues uh, when using these options. Uh, First of all, HECRAS includes three methods for modeling cohesive transport. Models should be aware of the default method not uh, the default method is not recommended. As I told you, the first option is not suitable for smaller grain size, and therefore you should use this option and the third options. Cohesive transport should be parameterized using the Krum and Partentize approach, especially if the systems erode cohesive materials. Uh, cohesive transfer project can be difficult or expensive to collect, but also um, highly variable spanning at least five orders of magnitude uh, and site specific. They should be measured with cephalon or similar instrument. Uh, I mean that for measuring uh, the cohesive material or uh, cohesive transport, you should use uh, some instruments to measure the uh, sediment transport capacity of these smaller grain sizes. Okay, uh, the next uh, option, which is very important, uh, for using this uh, option, you should enter the threshold or the some erodibility parameters for using this method. Uh, in order to, uh, to better uh, estimation of this parameter, I recommend you, you to refer to hydraulic reference uh, sediment reference of HECRAS and in that uh, reference manual you can find more uh, information about these items. In this case, I want to use these options to, uh, I mean, estimate the sediment transport for smaller grain sizes. And the next and the uh, other important uh, uh, option is the bed change options. Uh, you know that uh, the HEC, uh, the one d model bed change method are relatively simple and easy to, uh, I mean that, uh, understand. However, selecting a right bed change approach can be one of the most sensitive and difficult parts of one d sediment modeling. The 1D uh, bed change algorithms often attempts to simplify laterally heterogeneous process into cross-section average behavior. Modeler must select their bed change model carefully and experiment with their sensitivity to select one of, uh, to select to uh, the one uh, that introduced uh, the least errors. The default approach to bed change in 1D sediment is always the linear method. The linear method adjusts each uh, bit movable node the same vertical distance 
to deposit or erode the computed mass at each cross section. But the new editor gives uh, users more flexibility to mix and match appropriate the change methods in the channel and flat plane. Okay. You can go to the options tabs and select the change options for 1D. Okay, uh, after calculating the sediment transport capacity for each cross section, the model starts to alter these values uh, through the cross section laterally and vertically. Uh, for this issue, uh, bed change options uh, for channels, you can use linear or reservoir method. For erosion also, you can use linear and simplified CMF method. And for overbank, if you uh, select none, the model only deposit and erode, uh, erode, erode the sediment transport through the main channel. And the overbank will be left. Uh, if you select the linear method for all overbank and right bank, the model starts to alter the sediment transport capacity uh, through the cross sections in overbank and channel. Okay, channel and overbank uh, in this method are determined by movable bed limits, not bank station, as I discussed uh, in uh, previous parts. In most places, uh, places in Haycrest, the bank stations mark the transition between the channel and overbank of flood plain. Okay, Haycrest uh, uh, requires uh, erosion and deposition in the channel, but user can select erosion and or deposition in overbank. Uh, while in the previous uh, version of Haycrest, you, you don't, you didn't uh, have access to these uh, options. In the new versions, you can change uh, these for channel and overbank. This gives user four possible permutations of channel overbank processes. The four options is illustrated in this figure. Uh, if you use uh, the default version is linear for deposition and erosion in channel parts and now for overbank. And you can see the erosion and deposition process only occurred for main channel. And for uh, left and right overbank, there is no bit change. Uh, one, uh, if you select linear for overbanks for deposition, the model starts to deposit the sediment values for both LOB and ROB, I mean left overbank, right overbank, and main channel. If you select a linear method for both uh, overbank for erosion and for deposition in both channel and overbank, the model starts to erode in main channel, right bank, over, left overbank, and uh, in total of the cross section. And it is very uh, rare in real applications. And the second one is very common. And you can see when the flood is occurred, the model starts to erode and deposit in main channel and deposit in uh, overbanks. And, uh, the, and, the, and uh, we don't have uh, so uh, case studies that uh, the overbank starts to erosion and when you start the veneer, uh, veneer for uh, uh, overbank for erosion and deposition set to now uh, the model only starts to erode floodplains main channels and the position is only occurred in uh, main channels and this is almost uh, never occur in real the projects. Deposition and uh, erosion in channel and no bed change in the overbanks. This is the default approach. Uh, the name of the movable bed limit suggests this approach. The channel can move within the movable bed uh, but not outside of them. However, if the prototype deposits significant deposition outside of the channel, uh, this method can be uh, over predict channel deposition. Uh, it can even lead to unrealistic vertical adjustment or channel field with sediment uh, uh, errors that can crash the model, the sediment model. It can uh, also lead to 
hertz channel or an inverted channel as it depicted in figure 29. As you can see, we see uh, which can, uh, can find the position to movable beds. And if you select the venial method for overbank, the model accurately start to deposit in main channel and uh, overbanks. And this is another example that uh, show you the better choice is selecting second option. I mean, when you method for the position erosion op uh, uh, options and for overbank, you, you can use venue and uh, put uh, erosion for overbank as now. Okay. Uh, other uh, channel deposition, uh, deposition uh, method uh, is uh, uh, reservoir and uh, CM and uh, depth depend deposition. Okay, uh, you can see that for deposition you can use venue, reservoir, and distance decay. Uh, this is uh, the other uh, or alternate method for uh, uh, altering the the position uh, or sediment values uh, through the cross sections. Uh, uh, the reservoir deposition method, uh, yeah, some uh, depositional systems, particularly for grading reservoir deltas, depart uh, from veneer assumptions. The position more in deeper parts of channel. Uh, the reservoir options uh, deposit more in the deeper parts of the cross section, adjust the uh, change proportional to water uh, depth. The reservoir deposition, I mean, uh, is available in channel and over, but it is designed to fill the channel in backwater situations. Uh, while uh, the distance uh, decay flood plane deposition is a very simple and applied method. A wet sediment deposits in uh, flood plains, it's not always evenly distributed. Uh, more sediment tends to settle up closer to the channel than in the farther reaches of the flood plain. Walling and Hill and others uh, have demonstrated that distance decay model can estimate the distance dependence of uh, flood plain deposits. Therefore, he has, uh, has included distance uh, decay uh, flood plain options in he class model. ECRAS uh, is working more sophisticated version of this distance uh, model, but the current version of ECRAS uh, has a simpler linear decay model. The linear decay model deposits the full linear deposition thicknesses at the movable bed limit uh, and reduces the bed change proportional along the distance between the movable bed limit and water surface extent. And in this uh, example, you can see the difference between veneer and distance decay. You can see uh, when you use a uh, veneer method, the transport, uh, the final uh, cross section the bed is like this. And when you uh, use distance decay, the model starts to deposit in this shape. And in this figure, you can see when we are when the distance between uh, main channel is uh, uh, increasing, the value of the position is decreasing. And the closer distance to the main channel tends to a uh, higher value of the position and the uh, farther points start to lower value of the position. And the final, uh, the uh, final uh, method is the CM or simplified channel evolution model. The venue method is default method by uh, method for channel erosion and it's uh, available for flat plane erosion. Uh, uh, okay, however, HECRAS include one dimensional uh, channel erosion method. Uh, including simplified method. The simplified channel evolution is also designed for reservoir applications, in particular, uh, dam removal and reservoir flushing uh, models. The linear method uh, can under predict erosion in 
reservoir deposit when a uh, river scours reservoir deposit following either a dam removal or reservoir flushing downstream it does not remove sediment uniformly from the flat reservoir deposit therefore he can translate parameters from the erosion bed change options into simplified evolution model eroding sediment in the shape of transport uh, in shape of trapezoidal channel with the specified parameters of these researchers okay in this case you uh, 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 that say that he can only uh, apply this method to cross section with max steps and max side slope data, and it starts to erode the bed in these shapes. Okay, and and uh, final options in this window is related to area method. In order, in order to alter the sediment value uh, laterally and vertically in the cross section, the HECRAS uh, use a different area method, including backwater compatible Simpson rule, uh, single control volume, and average end area. Okay? What is the uh, area method? The simplest way to convert volume change to cross section change is to consider each cross section and its control volume independently uh, this is the called uh, single CV method in HECRAS uh, however when distributing the volume uh, longitudinally it is advantageous to spread the volume out over the control volume in a way uh, that uh, transition between the cross section uh, the other bit change method in HECRAS follows uh, HEC6 assuming that the volume change is not equally distributed over the control volume in order to compute the smooth transition between cross section he class assumes the mass is distributed in a wedge like this figure this assumption allows he class to use a couple common commercial uh, approximation to compute volume from irregular area now he class may uh, use four different methods for distributing erosion or deposition volume longitudinally over the control volume these methods uh, are back uh, compatible simpson rule single control volume and volume uh, and average and area okay uh, i want to stop this uh, part at this time and in the next part we will explain about other options. See you soon. Bye-bye.